Hey guys, it's Ben from Board to Bits here, and this is part two of our video series on creating a radial menu in Unity. So in our last video, we basically set up our scene and programmed our game so that when we click on this player character, we get the beginnings of a radial menu. We have this first button appearing um, above where we click. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to set it up so that this actually creates a uh, whole set of buttons around the, around the mouse and so that the buttons themselves will be customized based on whatever colors and icons we set for them. Uh, the other thing we need to do, as you can see here, is make it so that the menu actually closes when we release our mouse button. And that one's really easy to do, so let's just jump into the code and start with that right now. So we're going to go into Mono Develop, and if we go to our radial menu script, what we're just really going to do here is we're going to keep track of when the player releases the mouse and just destroy the game object when that happens. So we're going to use an update function, void update, and we'll really simple here we'll say if input dot get mouse button up so when we're releasing the left mouse button uh, whoops got a couple extra brackets there don't need those Do. Um, so if we get the mouse button up we're just gonna say destroy game object not, not capital game object I want the lowercase game object why is it doing that that's weird. Oh, because we don't have our closing bracket, so it's probably getting a little confused. So if we do that, close that, that should... Let's try typing it in again. There we go. Okay, destroy game object. So now when we go back to our game and we hit play now, we should... Have that disappear when we let go so small steps but a good first start so what we're going to do now is when we click this we want the options that we have in our player to appear around the mouse so first thing we need is we actually need some options so what we're going to do is we're going to start by setting this size to one and just do a kind of a template one the main reason I do this is just so that I can set this alpha all the way up because Unity starts all colors at zero. And we'll just do, that looks good, a little bit of a richer red. And then we'll throw this sword icon, or sword sprite, into the uh, sprite position here. And we'll lastly, we'll give it a title, we'll call it attack. So this is really, these three things make up our action that we called the class. And so now instead of just one, let's do five, five of these elements. And we'll do these really quickly here for the sake of time. I'll throw this in here, call this block. This one like a yellow. Give it this door icon, call it flea. It's kind of using like a sort of a fantasy battle theming here, but obviously this could work for whatever you want. You could make it saving and loading for your actual game administration. You can make it sci-fi. I encourage you to be creative and do whatever you like. Let's add a spell, because spells are cool. So we'll use the spell hand thing and we'll call it fire. Fireball, okay. So those are our five options. So we have these five options in our interactable script. And how this system works is the interactable tells the spawner to spawn the menu, and then the menu spawns the buttons. But we don't have, at this point, access to the interactable's information. So we need to kind of, we need to pass this information, most importantly, these option array, but we'll just pass the whole thing because there may be purposes you have that you want to actually work with the class itself. Um, so we'll pass this whole object, or this whole class, rather, to, um, to our radial button. So in order to do that, we actually can't use start for this function because we're going to need to pass in an interactable parameter. So instead, we'll call this spawn buttons, and we'll have it have a parameter here that is an interactable, which is that class we created, and we'll just call it obj for you know for the object that it is, um, and we need to make this public. So now. In theory, once we get to the end of this and this menu is creating itself, it has access to the information it needs. So we just had this in start before. 
So now we need to actually consciously call this spawn buttons function. So we'll do that here in our spawn menu. And we'll say new menu dot spawn buttons. And in here, we need to have our interactable object, which unfortunately we don't have access to as of yet. So we need to have another parameter here, interactable, and we can just call it the same thing because we're just going to be passing it down the line. And now this object is going to be passed into this function. So finally, we now need spawn menu to have a parameter. So here where we're calling it, fortunately we're in an interactable class, so we can just say this. This is going to pass itself to the radial menu spawner, which then passes it to our radial menu. So now that we have this object here, we have access to its options. And what we want to say is, instead of just creating one button, for every option that this object has, create a button. And that sounds like a for loop, so let's make one of those. For int i equals zero, i is less than object options dot length. So that is the number of options you have, i plus plus. And now we can just actually copy and paste this, or cut and paste it, right in here. And so now, now we're going to create a button for every option. We don't want them all, however, to have the exact same position. Right now they're all going to appear 100 units above the center of the menu. We want them to appear around the circle. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't taken calculus classes in over a decade, so I was not exactly sure how to even get started with this, so I googled it. I asked Google, creating... Um, or placing objects around a circle evenly, and fortunately other people had asked before me, so never doubt the uh, power of Google Foo. And I found this little clipping of code here, which I'm going to just copy and paste from my notepad into here, and I'm actually going to just comment out this one, but we're going to want it in a minute, um, some of the information from it. But let me just quickly show you what this does. It creates a float called theta, and that is really just setting the distance around the circle. So this is giving us the circumference of the circle and dividing it by um, the, number of, the number of options. And then whichever, whichever option you're on, you're gonna go that many around the circle. So the first one actually doesn't go anywhere because it's zero, and then one will go one segment, two will go, the next one will go two segments, so on and so forth until you've gotten all the way around the circle. So, this gives us the distance around the circle, but we need to convert that into an x and y coordinate on a grid so that we can actually place it on the screen. And so that's where these two floats come in, the x position, which is the sine of this theta we created, and the y position, which is the cosine of theta. And that's really all we need. Um, you can certainly do the research and we either Wikipedia it or the, you know, the, the um, math functions behind it, but Suffice to say, this will work to get us that position around a circle. And then so we just say new button dot transfer its local position around that center of the menu is going to be the x and y position. And then we're going to multiply that. This is why I kept this here. This hundred was how far above the menu it was. We want wherever, wherever we are in the circle, we want it to be a hundred away. So that's why we're multiplying this by 100. We can delete this now. And that is that is our positioning functionality. So if we save that and we go back to Unity, we should see now when we play, I'm gonna not maximize it just to save us a little bit of time here. When I click on this, we should get all five buttons. And that's because we have the five here. If we made this eight, say, oops, if we made this eight and actually had it save it, and we go like that, now we see eight there. If we made it three, now we see three there. That's that's how the positioning works. It's that um, those four lines of code set the position based on the number of units we have around a circle. So now what we want to do is set it so that our buttons actually reflect the information we have here in our actions. So let's jump into our radial button and create a couple of public variables here. We're going to want to create. Um, we're going to want to get the images of both the circle and the icon. And we're also going to create a string to store, go over to interactable here, this string title. 
so that it can pass that information along once um, the menu is created. So in order to get the images, we need to use the UI namespace, which is unityengine.ui. And now we can say public image. And we'll call the first one circle, and that's going to be that circle actual button, the circle of color we're going to have. And then another public image icon, which is that icon that sits in the middle of it. Pretty self-explanatory. Good code usually is. And then the last thing we're going to have is a public string title. So now that we have these three here, we can access them from our new button in our spawn button function. So we go here, hit enter, and we'll just say new button dot circle. And we want the color of the circle is going to equal the color in our option at i. So we're just going to say object options i and we want the color so we're just going to say dot color because that's what we named that's why i named these over here because they're going to tie to what things we want what uh, components we want here so new button dot icon dot sprite in the exact same way is going to equal object options i dot sprite and lastly new button dot title will just equal title. So that passes that information all into all into our button. So now when we go back here, go back to Unity, and if we hit play again, and it respawns, okay. And I'm gonna scroll this down a little bit so we can see we should have a red sword, blue shield, yellow door green bottle and yellow or orange hand with a kind of spell swoosh. So we do that and we don't have them and I can tell you exactly why. And that is because you see here object reference is not set to an instance because we never actually wired up our new button information here. So always remember now the button itself remember is our actual circle. So that's going to go into our circle. And then the icon is what we're going to put into this icon slot. We don't need to put the title slot because that's going to fill dynamically. Um, this doesn't need to be public at this moment. It will be in the future though. That's why I have that there. Uh, but you can just leave that blank. So now we'll save this, hit play again. And now we should be able to play and click. And there we go. We've got our five buttons um, based on the same as what our player shows here. So we've got red, blue, yellow, green, and orange. Now at this point it looks correct, but obviously it doesn't do anything. You can hover over these, they don't change or anything, and when you let go it doesn't do anything. It makes no difference whether you let go here off screen or actually on the button. So in our next video we are going to discuss how you pass the information, how you track whether or not the mouse is over the button, and then when you release passing in the proper information from that button to do whatever you're trying to do in your game. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.